Hello, hello, hello. This is Solo Logi episode 19. I haven't done one of these episodes for almost a month. If you're not familiar with the Solo Logi episodes that I produce, it's kind of how I started my f- my channel a little bit, my foxhole content. Essentially within my Solo Logi episodes, I'm trying to teach Solo Logi players different tasks that they can do to kind of occupy their time. Cause I just see all the time people posting that like, oh, I've tried Logi out, but I just have no idea what to do. I, you know, do one task and then I get bored or something. And I'm, I'm essentially just during this series trying to teach you different things that you can do to that kind of have purpose and meaning and that you would maybe enjoy doing. I mean, not everyone's gonna enjoy doing Logi. <laughs> That's for sure. I really do feel it takes a special breed to kind of like Logi because it, it, a lot of it is kind of monotonous. So you just have to be able to like just chill and vibe and I, again, find the purpose in what you're doing. So if you watch some of my other episodes, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of get a better understanding. If I sound really weird as well, it's because I think I have a cold right now. I think I got sick from my kiddos. <laughs> I've kind of had a runny nose and a sore throat, so... <laughs> But I'm gonna. I was told myself I gotta. I gotta record this because I am super busy the rest of the week, and I just haven't done a solo logic episode for a really long time. We are in War 101. We finally made it to 101, and uh, it's starting off really great for us wardens. It is a uh, west and east battle here. I haven't done west logic in a long, long time, so I'll kind of explain my thought process through that here pretty soon. But yeah, we're starting off really strong. It's only day six. I don't know if you're aware of how the excuse of hierarchy goes. Um, I don't know if I explained that right, but <laughs> I'll kind of I'll lay I'll lay out the definition. The, I, I'm going to call it the excuse of hierarchy for Foxhole. I've explained this in the subreddit a couple different times to people. But um, if a war ends 15 days or less, the side that loses, no matter which side. You know, both sides complain about something or other. But if it's, it's going to be, I'm not doing a warden bias or anything like that. It's, it's both sides complain about these things, at least from what I've seen. So if a war lasts 15 days or less, they're going to complain about low pop, uh, low population, or it's going to be a break war. It's like, they're just going to say, the only reason you won is because we had low population and people were taking a break. It's like, okay, I should preface this that I think I've said this many times too. I think, I think really good wars where both sides are kind of given a good effort is 25 days plus anything like that. No matter when, who loses that war, I think both sides gave it a good effort. So that kind of brings me back wars that are between usually like 15 and 25 days that kind of mark when we get up to 25 days. Usually what I see the most in excuses, if a war is lost between 15 and 25 days is because of alts and griefing and all of that. That's usually the excuse that I see from both sides again nothing specific those are just usually the excuses that come up it's like we only lost this war because we had so many griefers on our side yada 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 and with this new patch uh, update 52 I have a summary video I just recorded today and put out the devs are focusing more on you know stopping the griefing so hopefully some of their solutions will work and then last but not least the excuse that you're gonna probably find if a, a war lasts 25 days or longer usually sometimes still griefing is in there it's sprinkled in but it's more about balance I've just noticed anytime you get past day 25 any side that's losing is just going to complain about one item on their side or one tank or whatever and you know i don't do enough infantry or tanking to to know the meta and know the exact specific numbers on things but i just see it from both sides no matter who the losing faction is it just those are the excuses that come up so that's what i call the excuse of hierarchy i feel like i should note for the people that haven't maybe seen a lot of my solo logic episodes is it's almost a place for me to kind of rant too. Even though I do explain a lot of solo logy things and I do logy while I record this episode, I, I do tend to rant a little bit <laughs> about things as well. All right, to get into some of the logy talk though, I'm going to kind of cover why I picked Fisherman's Row as kind of my home base for this war. I strongly recommend that each war you try and find one hex that you want to kind of stay around, kind of one logy hub hex you want to stay around, and then usually like three or four close ones that you kind of want to work in as well. For example, for War 100, I was mainly in Callum's Cape, Stone Cradle, Fenneric Coast, Lynn Mercy. This is kind of my home base area for War 100. I didn't go like anywhere else. So after looking all the hexes on the west side, I really liked Fisherman's Row because I liked doing freighter runs and I liked the idea of uh, using this seaport right here which is starting to get some materials that will need some freighter runs and running it down this river pathway towards Ashfields and Red River and kind of supplying the south to push up. I will say I also like the idea of supplying uh, 
Jade Cove as well. I feel like this is an easy supply or even going further down and supplying Lynn Mercy. So kind of with explaining that, these, so like this pathway is gonna be my main routes and then maybe up to Lynn Mercy as well. So kind of stick around this region. So it's, it's about six hexes-ish. I might jump down here if there's some excess supplies. But these, these six are kind of gonna mainly be my, my home base. So I will say because it is day six, there's not like a ton you can do in the, the early days besides like make rifles, mammons, things along those lines and just kind of start building up your, your midline. We already have a bottlenecked refinery here with 11K B mats. Honestly, one of the best things you could probably do with these B mats right here is run them up to Jade Cove. So you could use these factories in this garage up here this would be a great task to do. If you want to make the task even more simple is you could transfer some of these 11K B mats to the storage depot, which it looks like somebody's already started doing. There's 66 uh, B mats in there. But really, again, what you want to do is move it up to Jade Cove so we can start using these factories. I think what I'm going to do first is do a little bit of factory play. I was making some B mats here and there's six B mats there. So I think I'll just make some items for a little bit. I only have five commends to give out. And I usually like that number to be higher just because I like to commend people a lot and thank them for what they're doing. So I think we're just going to craft uh, for the first portion of this a little bit. Obviously, you don't have to watch me do all of that. It's sped up or skipped. So, but I will say before you leave, always grab a wrench just in case you need to wrench some vehicles or use some vehicles. Because one thing I've noticed about fishermen's out here is it's, uh, it's a dirty place. <laughs> they do... Whoever's in charge of this region, this town right here especially, is just dirty. It's so, there's just cars everywhere and it just, ugh, just bugs me. But uh, yeah, we're going to go craft for a little bit. This is what I'm kind of talking about. There's just always cars everywhere. Like, look at all this. Look at all those flatbeds and those loaders. How many of them are going to be locked? Okay, so there's one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cars. How many are gonna be locked? My guess is six. All right, I was way off. It was only three. <laughs> only three out of nine were locked. Still so many vehicles here. I know they're being used for the facility over here probably, but wow, it's just a cluster cuss. So I was on last night getting some salvage and building up my B mats and my explosive materials because I knew I did want to craft tonight a little bit. So, and then I'm going to be able to take some of these B mats. I should have grabbed some of these first and then did my stash, but maybe these will be here for a while. Oh, and quite a bit of explosive materials too. I might have to, to do that. So you might ask why I'm not doing like the MPF, the, the mass production factory. I usually only do that when I'm working with regiments um, or in the middle or late war, um, because in early war, I usually like to have those slots for regiments. So I don't want to be a solo player just taking up a random slot in the, the factory. So that's why I use these small factories, which all have zeros. So we can make some quick materials. Looking here at the seaport, we can make some shirts. We can always make ammo for guns and mammons, it looks like, so we'll, we'll do some of that. With one Logi truck full of B-mats, we can fill up four different categories here. We can get some Blakes with 762, we can get the anti-tank guns going, we can get binoculars and radios, and then we can get shirts. So, good use of truck space and all that. Now we can go fill it up again. All right, same thing. There must have been some uh, extra B mats in that last factory, but same thing. We'll basically fill up four different categories. Um, we have usually about four or five minutes. That last one's probably still going. So what you should do in between is just find some close salvage mines, go grab some salvage, go back to the refinery, and then go back to the factory. And then it should be a continuous loop. Honestly, with all the harvesters and the salvage mines, you should never have to really go get scroop like you should never have to hammer it like ever essentially if you see here with the salvage field uh the 7k right below it i pointed at my computer monitor 
<laughs> as if you could see that. But the 7K there, that's how much is in a harvester there that you could just go pick up like a salvage mine here. All right, as you can see here, I just pulled up to this factory. Everything is done. So we're kind of on a perfect loop right now. I got more bee mats. I am gonna wait until this person has backed up because I have to dump these bee mats into the storage to pull this. And I don't want him to accidentally use my bee mats. So I will wait here for a little bit. If he's just sitting here for a while, that means he's probably waiting for stuff to get done. And I'll just have to take my chances, which is fine, but I'll wait just a second. All right, we're gonna go for it. So the best way to do this, just in case you don't want him to, to steal stuff, is we'll throw four in real quick, grab this, and then we'll make shirts real quick so that at least that uses some of it up. And then same thing, grab four real quick, and then use this real quick. All right, he's already left, so we're good. And then unfortunately I can't fit everything on my truck, so usually I just leave like one 20 millimeter because I don't really care too much about that. So I'll just throw everything in now. Uh, we'll leave one of these. Grab that, so we're full in here. So we can do that, that. And then bada bing, bada boom. Now we go deliver the crates to the seaport. And then it's just a continuous loop. This has got to be one of my favorite seaports, honestly. Just aesthetically, how it's kind of laid out. Sometimes how it's laid out. Um, you know, it has your entrance and exit, but some sometimes people don't follow that. But, I mean, it just it's just a beautiful seaport. So we're going to put the crates into public. We're going to clean out this inventory because I hate seeing this stuff right here. One other thing I'm going to note is you'll know I'm, I'm a wrench fiend. I feel like wrenches win wars. So this town hall, town base where everyone spawns, there's only one wrench right now. But we have eight crates here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab four crates of wrenches and I'm going to put it in the town base. So that way when people spawn, if they need to go get a vehicle and all the vehicles are locked, there's wrenches to be used. All right, now we got 21 wrenches in there. They'll be gone in like 30 or 40 minutes probably. All right, factory number two. No one's around, so I'll just grab this stuff real quick. And then we'll make stuff real quick. And then we are going to return the crates to the seaport. And I think I'm going to be good. I'm already got 13 commends and I still have two factories loading up. So I'm going to, this is, this is like the fastest way to get commends to give out. I, I made a video about it already, but yeah, making stuff so I can give commends out. But yeah, I'll unload these two factories and in between that time of waiting, I'll get, I'll get some salvage and then I'll go into another task. All right. We put those crates in the seaport. As I should have mentioned earlier, I like doing tasks for roughly about 15 or 30 minutes and then I like switching to a new task. So again, to make solo Lodge important, to keep it fresh, just create new objectives for yourself and it'll, it'll keep it fun. So I'm going to wait until these two factories are done with the rest of my items. I'll deliver them to the seaport. And then I think I'm going to do the bee mats thing I was talking about earlier. I think I might try and get a flatbed and move these bee mats up to Jade Cove. I think that would be the best idea. Let me look at one more thing. Oh, honestly, moving them to Blemish would not be a bad idea either because they have two factories there. I do like that play a little bit more since it's a little bit more frontline. That's kind of crazy that there's two factories there. Why is that's like, it seems a little OP. Am I understanding that right? Does everyone else think the same thing or is I guess that's still maybe more backline. I don't know. That seems crazy that there's two factories there and a garage too. I know it's blemish, really big city and everything, but I mean, it's just so near the front. So yeah, I think I'll just take the B mats down over there. I guess I think that'll be better than Jabe Cove, honestly, dirty, dirty little town, just vehicles all over the place, always locked. <laughs> Just have to stop and get in. There's the town, you know, somebody will pop out and grab that. I might grab that with a crate for those bee mats later if I can't find another one. All right, this is factory number three that I'm gathering. Full truck. 
16 commends. All right, factory number four, all done. 20 commends, got 20 commends I can give out now. It maxes out at 100. Look at this parking lot. I actually don't mind this parking lot too bad. I know I've ranted and raved about parking lots before, but this one I don't mind as much, besides all these prototypes. I do like this long, <laughs> the long track vehicle right there. Except for I do hate when people build their own trucks, when they got trucks out here, but I don't know. Maybe they're trying to reserve them. I don't know. You know what? I just, I'm indifferent about parking lots still. All right, we finished the crafting session. Now we got the flatbed next to this refinery. It was nicely parked right here, so I didn't have to go to the seaport or do anything like that. So we are going to go from Fisherman's Row here over to the gallows and gather these bee mats up. And then we are going to take them to Blemish. This looks like a one-way trip that I'm not bringing the flatbed back for. All right, 60 B mats. I don't know why they have these two buttons next to each other, but I almost cl <laughs> clicked to submit loading area. Package, 60 B mats going to blemish. I got in the train. What the? I'm not trying to drive it, I'm trying to get out. Am I stuck in this train? I'm stuck. Hello? <laughs> Sir? Oh no. How do I get out of this? Can I do unstuck right here? Is this worth it? Hey, Winter. Yeah, what's up? Can you shoot me out of this train or something? I'm like stuck in it. Yeah, that's that train. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know already. You know. <laughs> I mean, the easiest way to get out of it is just to log out and pray you get it sleeper, but oh, I, I think see. I might be able to move your truck. Oh, maybe that it? Maybe that's it? There we go, there the truck. Go. All right, I should have asked you that first, right? Yeah. <laughs> just shoot me. Just end it. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. Those nice vids, bro. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that, sir. Yeah. Have a good one, dude. What a nice fellow. Oh, Andy gives me commends. That's too kind. That's too kind. Well, shout out to Private Winter. Shout out if he makes it all the way through this solo Logi video. I always say they're going to be short and then they're always like way too long. But uh, shout, out, shout out to Private Winter. Thank you. So funny. I asked him to kill me <laughs> before thinking like, oh, why don't you just move the truck? He's a smart fellow. Smart fellow. All right. How do we get to blemish? Straight shot. Uh, down the coastline, past keep, past the breach, or we could turn at the breach. Okay, we might have to look at the map again, but here we go. I don't really know why, but these red facility buildings right here just make me think of pod racers you know from like star wars or like something very star wars like a shield generator or something <laughs> i don't know
Mr. YouTuber Man. Hey, what's going on? Not much. I love the fucking... I love the summary video. Oh, do you? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I was, at, I was at work. I was at work. I couldn't really watch the dev stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I try and make them as quick as possible, like, in short as possible, right? Just, like, quick and dirty. I appreciate it. Hey, yeah, no worries. Appreciate you watching. Thank you. All right. Well, cool. Two people. That gave me nice compliments. All right. So that was uh, delivering 60 B mats to Blemish. So, yeah, they have a lot of B mats now, which is good. So we can use in factories and things. As I mentioned earlier, I am feeling kind of sick. My runny nose is kind of coming back here. So I might call it for the night. But I was able to do two pretty good tasks under an hour. You know, I crafted quite a bit over here and then, you know, did that Blemish run. And really, I wanted to do that blemish run because I don't get the opportunity to make these drives that often. And I would really just like to get used to the area a lot more. As you might have noticed, maybe through the speed up part, um, I checked my map a lot to see where I was going. So hopefully this war, I can just like drive a lot in this area just to get used to it a lot more. Just because I, I'm almost never in this area. Uh, as far as I get is maybe a little bit into Lockmore. And again, for an Eric Coast, I never usually go past this point. Same thing kind of with Fisherman's Row and everything like that. So, but yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed the video, especially if you were first time watchers for the Solo Logi kind of series. Again, sorry for my voice and sounding sick, um, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more Foxhole content, really helps the channel. And as always, I appreciate all of you watching and the nice comments. If you ever want to talk to me in game, just say hi and I, I'd be happy to talk to you. As long as I'm not too busy, obviously, if I need to get going, like, log basically if i need to log off usually i'm not too busy in a task but uh i'll chat with you anytime you want to chat but yeah thanks for watching and cheers